My name is EMT Anthony Gaddison, the program manager for the youth program. I'm here with my partner, EMT Chris Belchin, the other program manager for the youth program. How you feeling? I'm feeling great. Glad to be back. That's good. We got a lot going on this year, right? Yes, we do. What We're we about to on? start the SEMSA 24 Leadership Academy this week. Actually, today is day one. Oh, boy. Don't remind me. Yeah, right? <laughs> what, else, what else we got going on? We also about to finish Women's of 24. Oh, boy. And then the high school's about to graduate. Yep. And the list just keeps going on Keep and going. on. Then we got the alumni dinner coming yep. up. You see how we mm. We got a lot of people to talk to. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're not tired? No, never. I'm never tired. But guess what? So this month is... um youth takeover with the podcast and um we here as guest hosts you know taking over the youth takeover you know there how you that go. goes um and i had spoke to two special fire cadets they are alumni from the youth program and um you want to guess who they may be i'm gonna take a wild guess fire cadet reynolds and fire cadet montero but you knew that already <laughs> you got a file cabinet up in your head you knew that but yeah i spoke to them and uh it was a very, very interesting and good conversation. They was able to tell me about the fire cadet, how they're doing, and, you know, give advice to people that's out there. So you want to take a look at that interview? Yes, let's do it. All right, cool. This month is Youth Takeover, and today I'm here with two special youth members from the uh, youth program. It's the fire cadet Jonas and fire cadet Shanique. But I want you to introduce yourself. Tell me about you. I'm fire cadet Jonas Montero. Uh, Instructor Gaddison was my instructor about some seven years ago at Captain A. Vernon Richard High School of Fire and Life Safety. So I joined the Fire Cadet Academy about a year ago, mm -hmm. and it's it's been good. I, I love it. It's a great opportunity. Shanique. I'm Fire Cadet Shanique Reynolds. Um, I also attended YEMSA. I was in the FEMSA class, and I had a great experience. I had great instructors, and here I am now as a Fire Cadet, and it's also great. So. <laughs> I'm excited to continue. How has your experience been so far since you've been on the fire cadet side? It's a lot of moving around. Uh, sometimes we're all over the city. Mm -hmm. Could be we're here one day, the next day we're, we're somewhere else. So it's a lot of managing. But at the end of the day, it's, it's a great opportunity. It's very flexible to my work schedule. I have a one-year-old. Um, I'm starting school now. I have a, another job. So it, it, it works out. It works out. I could definitely m make it happen, and it's just it, it's the goal. That's good, man. Goal. So man I'm, I'm very good. happy to be here. Congratulations on your one year old. Your man, father thank now. You. Thank I you. looked at you as my son. You know, <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, you got a grandson that you haven't met yet. Yeah. Be responsible. There we go. We're gonna get there. <laughs> How do you guys learn about the fire cadet though? Um, so when I was in Yem Yemzo, I've attended a block party, a mobile academy, and I've seen women firefighters, they were working out and everything. And as I was leaving, a firefighter stopped me and he said, hey, we have uh, the Fire Cadet Academy coming out. You should try it. And I said, hey, why not? The opportunity presented itself. I signed up and I got called back. <laughs> and look where you're at right now. Look where I'm at, exactly. And look what you're at. You guys have work uh, rotations. Like, how does it work as so far as the Fire Cadet with you guys? Are you guys all here at headquarters or you're just out in the field? No, we're, we're all over the place. Uh, a lot of the cadets are separated. Mm -hmm. Some were at The Rock, some work throughout the city, some are here at Nine Metro Tech, some work at firehouses, EMS stations. Every 15 week, we rotate to another bureau. Mm -hmm. So we could be really could, could be anywhere. Every 15 weeks, we change. Right now, we're on a third work rotation. I myself work with recruitment. I've been with EMS ops and intergovernmental affairs mm -hmm. so so far it's been all over the place and what about you where have you been assigned um so my first location i was at an ems station uh, station 5 8 mm -hmm. and then i also went to recruitment where he's at now and i'm currently in community affairs um the good thing about that is like you get to see the different things that the fdny has to offer so like we get to see the ems side along with the fire side and then also the civilian side of what goes on so it's awesome because it's just it opens your mind what um, have you learned so far that you feel like you know this is good to know or i shouldn't tell people about this because it's this my little secret <laughs> you know <laughs> it, it's definitely it a lot of be, be behind the scenes right now with recruitment I, I get to see the process of you know people that might be in high school colleges how they get to become a firefighter is how we reach out mm -hmm. 
uh, having to make phone calls every day, running the mo mobile academy, right. running mm -hmm. tutorial sessions for people that you know potentially want to come come on this job someday. Mm -hmm. uh, with intergovernmental affairs, we were meeting with council members, going to all these meetings, asking for funds, and it, it just puts it so much into perspective. There's so many things that go on that the regular person would never know about unless mm -hmm. they were involved in here and actually getting ready to see it. Would you recommend this program to uh, members out there? Of course. Of course, I talk about it all the time where my my friends would ask me, like, hey, how, how did you get on it? What can I do? Every time I go back to the high school, it's always, oh, like, what do you do now? How, how did you get there? And I'm like, I've just, I've just stuck with it. Mm. I've just stuck with it th throughout the years. I knew that this is what I wanted to do. So I always try to come back. <laughs> So that was amazing, right? Right. That was. That I'm was glad good, to see that they're doing well. Yeah, that and was a that good interview. The five cadet program is definitely one of one of the wonders that's out here. Right. That's really beneficial for them. And it's good to see those two in action. You know, I learned so much about them working in, as a fire cadet, and right. uh, you know, just being on a job mm -hmm. as a fire cadet. You know, so that was good. And making a difference. You know, they're setting their, their careers up. For success and they're already a year in so that's amazing right actually i also got to interview someone very familiar to us the assistant commissioner of the youth workforce and pipeline programs michelle maglione oh you spoke to our boss <laughs> oh. yes and with that interview that went well because she was able to go in detail of the beginning of the program to the end of the program and all the logistics that had to fine tune how this program is running nice nice let's check it out here we go Alongside me today, I have a very special guest. I have the Assistant Commissioner, Michelle Maglione of the Youth Workforce and Pipelines Programs. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. Thrilled to be here with you. I'm thrilled to be here with you, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're having a great day. So tell us about yourself. How did you start here with FBNY? Well, um, I'll try to keep it short. I started with the department in 2006. Um, I was hired as the Director of uh, Recruitment and Diversity at the time. So that's okay. how I started. And how many years do you have? Um, more than 18 at this point, <laughs> which is pretty remarkable. That is pretty remarkable. That's a stellar career. What is your role within the FDNY Youth in their respective programs? So I am the Assistant Commissioner for Youth Workforce and Pipeline Programs. Um, those programs include the FDMY Captain Vernon A. Richard High School, um, which is a regular Department of Education high school on the Thomas Jefferson campus in East New York. Um, we also oversee the FDMY Fire and Emergency Medical Services Exploring Program, which is a leadership program for young people ages uh, 14 to 20, and we currently have eight posts throughout the five boroughs. Um, we are the Youth EMS Academy program, yes, which you're very are. familiar with <laughs> as one of our program managers, and that's a New York State basic EMT certification program. Um, we run several cohorts a year, and um, we have 19 students getting ready to take the state exam in our WEMSA 24 class, um, and through that program, we've already certified 599 Ooh. young men and women as mm. New York State certified EMTs. Um, and the final program on our portfolio is the Fire Cadet Academy, which is our newest program. What a beautiful, beautiful career so far, right? Yes, very we much so. We have been hitting milestones after milestones after milestones. Yes. And now we've hit another milestone, the youth takeover. That's why we're here today. So I'm we just keep pretty excited going. about that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us more about the Fire Cadet Academy and, and what's it all about? Absolutely. Um, the Fire Cadet Academy is a two year apprenticeship program uh, for young men and women from uh, New York City that have graduated from New York City high schools right. or high school equivalency programs here in New York City. Um, during their two years in the program, um, we kind of cover four pillars um, within the Fire Cadet Academy. Character development, okay. um, obviously academics and fitness, um, and then the experiential piece um, where they do six different work rotations throughout the boroughs uh, in the department as a way to really become familiar with the department itself and how all the bureaus interact together um, to support the overall mission of the agency. So you can say they're getting the well-versed um, background of each part of the academy, or well, each part of the department, basically. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we're just about a year in. In June, it will be a year. Um, we currently have 86 cadets, um, and they have done it all from working on, on special events for the department, mm -hmm. working throughout the five boroughs. Um, they uh, just recently participated in the Climb the Summit 
event yep. uh, for the FDMY Foundation, where my understanding is our teams did pretty well and um, won some stair mills for some firehouses, that's, which is pretty excellent. That's amazing. Um, and right now they're preparing to take the promotional exam for firefighter. Yes. Um, and the goal is to have these 86 fire cadets promote directly from fire cadet to probationary firefighter so that when they're done with these two years in the program, they'll both go into probationary firefighter school and come out on the other side as firefighters. That's amazing. I already know they're all going to go through it. This is their passion. They're going to stick it through, stay the course. Tell us more about the importance of the FDNY youth in implementing these programs for the youth as a whole. Uh, it's a great question. Um, in my time with the department coming in in 2006, one of our overall goals for the department has been to diversify our workforce, um, specifically to bring in young men and women of color um, into our ranks. Um, we've done a really great job on um, pipelining our young men and women into the EMS ranks. Mm -hmm. um, and we have had um, 28 of our youth alumni who've been promoted to firefighter or come off the open competitive list to firefighter. Um, but this Fire Cadet Academy gives us another avenue to pipeline young men and women from the city um, right into the career of firefighter. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, all of these programs are essential because um, many of the young men and women in our city did not grow up with relatives in the fire right. department and don't know about these amazing careers I'm, and I'm the sure path. I didn't. Um, they really, it's been the best kept secret. Mm -hmm. And um, to meet these young men and women and work with them and help make their dreams come true, um, yourself included, <laughs> is a uh, just been a remarkable journey for me, and um, it's been incredible for the department to um, bring in these new folks. Absolutely, and to just keep the the pipelines going, basically, you know, for all the young youth out there like myself, now being a program manager, I've seen it from one side all the way to the other side. I'm here now interviewing you, which is amazing. <laughs> so just seeing all the pipelines work together as a whole, getting these young individuals to start their careers and more has been amazing. What advice do you have for the youth candidates interested in joining the FDNY? It's the same advice that I give over and over again. Um, work ethic, that if mm -hmm. this is something that they want, they're going to have to work really hard for it. Um, Nothing is given to you. You have to work for it. Right. You know how hard you've worked to get to where <laughs> right. you are. Um, you know how hard we push our young uh, men and women that work with us to um, give it the best that they have. Um, that work ethic is going to pay them back for the rest mm -hmm. of their lives. Um, and it's what's going to help them advance throughout their careers. So. Absolutely. And to know their why. You know, we always say that. You Absolutely. Know why. So as long as they know their why and why they joined the department and why they're here, I believe they're set for life. Thank you, Commissioner, for stopping by on the Joint FDNY podcast, and we hope to see you again. It was great having you. It was great to be here. Thank you so much. Um, I really enjoyed being here with you, and I'll be back. Absolutely. <laughs> Wasn't that a great interview? That was a great interview. You know, it's, it's good to hear from our boss when she's talking about the fire cadet because, you know, we both know how much work and you know, personnel mm -hmm. it took for the fire cadet to just start running, you know, so it was it was a great interview. And I then seeing say. where we came from, right? This right. all came from the FDNY High School. Right. And now we have just branched off into so many different programs. Right. It's phenomenal that the youth is taking over. Definitely. You know, that's why it's Youth Takeover Month. <laughs> just saying. But um, in case you missed it, uh, last month they, we had uh, celebrated Women's History Month, as mm -hmm. you know, and um, Chief uh, Fitzsimmons uh, sat down with two founding members of Squad 8, you know, and that was actually a good interview as well. So uh, let's take a look at that. Opening Squad 8 and having her like by my side was uh, just an amazing experience. And I think I, I'd be remiss to, to, to not mention the the other members of the, the company made the transition very 100%. easy. The, the, the uh, men in the company were, were awesome. They're supportive. Um, and like I said, I think it was very helpful that we all started on the same level mm -hmm. and it wasn't, I never felt like I had to prove anything. And, you know, harkening back to what Mel was saying before, be confident in what you're doing. If you, if you want to come into this type of command, you have to have the experience and you have to have the practice in doing the basic skills. You have to have the basic skills down pat. That can't be a question. Growing up in a Caribbean household, I had no idea about the fire department, being a firefighter. Uh, that wasn't a conversation in my household. I got to college now and 
my EMT final conflicted with my geology final. So I went to the professor and I said, listen, it's, is it possible that I could postpone this uh, exam for uh, my EMT final? He said, EMT, what about firefighter? I said, firefighter? There's no women firefighter in the department. And he uh, connected me to Kinga Milnick, which was his former student. Mm -hmm. I spoke to her and she said, it's a great opportunity. It's less than 30 women on the job. So I said, ah, oh, challenge accepted. <laughs> um, so it, it, it harnessed my competitive nature and I got a career in helping people. So here I am. We are really of the mindset of leaving the door open for the people coming behind us. And by that, I mean, we want more people to uh, aspire to learn and to get more training on this job, whatever it may be. And if SOC is the uh, route that somebody wants to take, I would, they can reach out directly either to myself or Melissa or other, uh, if it's uh, women that they're interested in speaking to, you have Jackie Martinez in 270 or Chichi Picaglia in Squad 18. They're all members in the special operations. And we want to ensure that um, the opportunities that we have had continue for people who've come after us. And mm -hmm. honestly, reaching out directly and finding out exactly what it entails is, is probably one of the most important things. I know it was helpful for me when I, I joined. It was really great to hear from uh, two founding members of Squad 8, you know, about their experience about being a, a woman as a firefighter. You know, that was that was really good, don't and, you think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also um, knowing that we have like former alumni that's in fire cadet, mm -hmm. that's also training to be women firefighters, is a great thing to see and they're very inspirational. That's great, that's great. Well, that concludes the FDNY Youth Takeover. <laughs> My name is Anthony Gaddison, EMT and Program Manager for the Youth Program, alongside with... EMT Christabel Chin, also the Program Manager for the Youth Programs. Uh, we'll see you guys next month. <laughs>